How's it going guys and welcome back to Project Time Tech. You know I'm a sucker for a good deal and I'm a sucker for some vintage technology and I like a good mystery every now and then <laughs> and that leads me to this guy. I basically saw this thing sitting in a corner. I was kind of intrigued because I saw this uh, this computer emblem on the front of it and of course you couldn't read the lettering down below but you can see you know the computer emblem so my interest was piqued so i walked over to it and looked a little bit closer and it says that well this is a portable computer so i stroll over to it and um i'm thinking boy those um those sure look like isa slots so i unzip it it's a motherboard it's not just a motherboard but it's two motherboards so now it looks like we have ourselves a genuine basket case on our hands well now I'm hooked. I gotta have the thing. I gotta have it at any price, no matter what. Must be mine. So at the massive selling price of 10 bucks, I'm all in. I'm figuring, you know, it's worth 10 bucks just in the mystery aspect alone, right? I mean, even if the whole thing is scrap, it's it's worth it's worth something. I also noticed that I have user manuals for this whole thing. Uh, the the user's manual, the portable computer's assembly manual, the 386SX motherboard, and the display card, along with the sheet for the hard drive. So um, so it's kind of, that that makes it even cooler. Also, a static bag, a expansion slot cover, and most of the handle, which also reminds us that indeed it is portable. So I've already pulled this thing out of the bag and I've already kind of looked it over a little bit and I want you guys to see what I see. Looks like we have a five and a quarter floppy drive and that is most likely a hard drive in there. But the real fun, the real fun is on this side because uh, if you can see down in there, I see bubble wrap, I see ribbon cables, but what I don't see is a motherboard. So that tells me that probably somebody was either either blew something up on the motherboard or the motherboard quit or maybe they were just going to do an upgrade. Uh, it says it was a 386. Maybe they were upgrading to 486. I don't know. But uh, but anyway, we have uh, we have two two system boards here. Uh, I haven't even gone so far as to unwrap these. But as far as the front goes and the rest of the body goes, it's in pretty good shape. It has an AT top keyboard and a display that uh, tilts. Oh, it does more than tilt. Oh, how about the display isn't even screwed in? All right. Uh, we'll just uh, let's put that back there and pretend like that didn't happen. Uh, but anyway, I think this would be a really cool candidate to uh, to get back up and going and make it work again if we possibly can. Uh, I'm really excited to. <laughs> to get the back off of it and kind of learn a little bit more about it. So you can see though that we at least we do have a power supply in here. So with a screen, a power supply, the uh, the floppy and potentially a hard disk in it and a system board, the only thing I don't see is RAM or I don't see any cards. So um, I don't see any way to control the, the drives. I don't see any way to make the display go. So I'm hoping that that, that junk is like tucked away in some of that bubble wrap we see in there. So let's take the back off of it and see what it's made of. Moment of truth. Well, it's somewhat like I expected. There are a bunch of parts in here. Um, we have a Raspberry Pi case. All right, that's just got screws and a broken piece of something and some uh, insulating washers. That is a bezel for hard drive. Nope, that must be a bezel for, nope. We're gonna call it a bezel for the drive bay. I don't know. I believe this looks like the cable that the uh, monitor had attached to it. That is going to be memory. Uh, 
don't know how much memory, but there are four sims there. All right, do that. And what's here? That is a serial and parallel card, so it's not O board. That is a drive controller. Looks like it does an IDE and a floppy. Model is WDAT240. I'll bet you anything that is a Western Digital card. And that is, is that the card that the monitor plugs into? I'll bet you that's what that is. I'll bet you this is our display board. Um, yeah, because uh, CGA and EGA graphics, that used a nine pin best I remember. Oh yeah, here we go. LCD on and uh, off. So I guess that turns the display on and off. And maybe that's external port. That's what we're gonna go with. Educated guess. What else awaits us? A door. That, that goes there. Anything else? Oh, that, hey, there's our ribbon cables. That'd be a floppy cable. No hard drive cable though. Yep, wait, got something. Ah, that'd be the uh, 40 pin IDE cable. At least we know what's here. Let's have a look at those uh, at those system boards. Let's see what's what there. All right, uh, looks like a baby AT board. It uh, It is an AMD uh, 386SX25 with a math coprocessor. This battery here, I'm pretty sure I see corrosion. Yeah, I know I see corrosion. I definitely see corrosion there. But I also see flux here and here. That is not a factory solder job, and that battery is not a Varda. That is a GP branded battery. Let's look at candidate number two. I already see a problem. <laughs> it shows up like in bright red. Look at this. Check this out. Those are copper, copper uh, trace repairs. We're missing a keyboard connector. Right there. It says keyboard. Oh, and we're missing the battery too. Oh, that's what that's what's happened. That's what's happened. Oh yeah, you can see it really well right here. It looks like the battery leaked and all of these traces here are really ugly. Some of them are scraped down and it does look like that somebody was in the process of attempting to create jumpers across here to fix this. Oh, look, there's more. Look, here's two more and a lot of flux going on here. Uh, strangely though, the back of the board does not look that bad, but I definitely see signs of corrosion here. This, these, uh, five pins here are where the motherboard or where the keyboard connector would have, would have gone. And there's a lot of corrosion there. These two right here are where the battery would have gone. Um, and then these two here would be where the keyboard actually just, uh, mounts for, you know, for rigidity for just, you know, to, so it doesn't fall off. All of the all of the problems are contained to this area right here. How was it oriented in the machine? Oh, something just fell. Something something's rolling around in there. Oh, there it is. That's what was rolling around. Keyboard connector. At least we have all the pieces of the puzzle, I think. The machine would have sat like this. And the board would have been in it like this which means the battery would have been in the bottom right corner of the board. So that explains that. That explains why um, when the battery leaked, it looks like it didn't get anything other than 
this little area down here. Problem is, I wonder, I wonder if somebody started fixing this and realized there were some middle layers to the board that were no good, and if they just gave up and maybe bought another board because that's exactly what it looks like is going on here. I guess my main question is, why didn't they put it in? Why didn't they get it up and going? Because, you know, either this board is bad too, <laughs> or it doesn't fit, or there's some reason why, why it's not in there. I think we'll put um, this system board just on the bench and, wait, do we want to do that one or do we want to do this one? Let's put this system board on the bench and uh, we'll put an actual video card in it. We'll put maybe a stick of that RAM, maybe two sticks of that RAM in there, I mean, and boot the thing up and let's see if the thing will even post. I mean, will it even, is it too far gone to even post? If it doesn't post, then we'll take this board, we'll put it on the bench and we'll see if it will post. So my guess is this is the board that was originally in the machine and they pulled it out because of damage, tried to maybe fix it, gave up on it, couldn't get it to work. So my guess is they bought this one. So I'm thinking this one definitely doesn't post for sure. <laughs> and I'm thinking this one might post 50-50 shot. Even if it does post, we're gonna have to hit it with some, uh, some baking soda and kind of clean up that existing trash there. So I'll say that's what we do first. I'll say we, uh, we get out some tools and we go to work. I wanna get everything out of here. I wanna get the power supply and the drive bay out of it, kind of scattered on the table. And maybe I can, um, ooh, that fell out, look at that. And maybe I can, um, you know, just kind of get it up and going here on the bench and see what we get. Anyway, looks like the drive cage is held in by a couple, three screws. That should slide out at this point. Oh, look at that. Western Digital model 95044A. Uh, doesn't have any of the information printed on it, but I think we have a sheet for that. Power supply looks like it's held in just by these two screws here on the side, so I'll pop those out. There we go. Sort of, there we go. Oh, just some tangles. We're all good. All right, Delta. I think we'll just uh, think we'll just set the chassis out of the way, and let's get Mr. Questionable motherboard on the bench here. Let's see what it does. So we'll see if it posts, but uh, I don't expect a whole lot to happen here. Uh, the keyboard connector isn't on it, so I couldn't put a keyboard on there even if I wanted to to actually get into BIOS without doing some work. All right, black to black, that's the way that hooks up. I will take maybe two sticks of RAM. All right. Power cord. Everybody got your glasses on? Ready to see some sparks? Zoom in close. All right, well, it didn't catch on fire. So there's that. Say we need to. I'll say we need to stick a video card in this, and um, and see what that does. Uh, rather than putting all that mess in, I think I'm just going to grab a uh, ISA VGA card out of my little stash. Anybody taking bets on which card slot I should be using? Which one doesn't work? <laughs> I guess is my thing. Okay. Card plugged in. I'll roll back out of the way. I'm getting a post. Actually, if you can see from the glare of all the lights, that thing's actually posting. 512K. Floppy drive controller failure. And that's because there's not a floppy drive. Well, if I'm being honest, I kind of really didn't expect that to work. Um, but that whole no, that whole no keyboard thing is going to be a problem. I wonder if it's worth um, just throwing some solder on the keyboard and plugging the keyboard in. 
Well, at the risk of wasting a lot of time, I went ahead and stuck the keyboard connector just back in the holes. And um, these little questionable traces, they do run under the keyboard, but uh, under the connector, but the connector doesn't touch them. So I think I'm just going to solder it back together and then we'll see, you know, we'll see if it works when the keyboard's hooked up. I should be cleaning these connections, but honestly, I don't see that I'm probably going to be using this board. All right, I didn't, um, I wonder if I should put a couple of drips of solder um, on the supports here, just in case. I don't think that it grounds or anything through those, but, you know, never hurts to overachieve, right? All right, there's that. Let's go back to where we were. We'll plug this card back onto it. We'll grab our factory original keyboard. Getting pretty tight on my workbench now. <laughs> okay, taking bets. Oh, you're crooked. Hold on. There, you guys are crooked. Got you fixed. And on. Actually, I don't have anything going on on this keyboard. I don't have number lock, caps lock, nothing. Okay, that's the deal. That's what's going on. I'll bet you that this battery died and probably took out the keyboard uh, connection. I bet that's what a lot of those traces were, uh, were for keyboard. So, um, yes, it posts. Yes, it comes up. No, it does not have a keyboard. Um, I think what we should do at this point is grab our other board we'll pop it up here on the bench and we'll fire it up and we'll see what it does all right the new keyboard for the, <laughs> the new motherboard board keyboard motherboard same thing all right oh wait we got to put some ram in this bad boy don't we i have two sticks all right now let's try this again Firing it up. All right. F1 to resume. Okay, look, I'm, I'm in CMOS setup, so this one is probably going to be okay. All right, well, that seems to work just fine. What do you say we put the rest of the RAM in? Let's make sure it boots with the rest of that RAM. And if it does, then um, I say we just keep moving forward. Okay, RAM. Let's try this again. Power on. Six forty K. Mismatch F one standard CMOS. Yes. <clears throat> Escape exit. Right to CMOS and exit. Yes. Drive not ready, disk A. Of course, there's no disk A. I guess probably the next thing to do, since it does at least post, would be try and try and get it to actually boot. I mean, who knows? It may just be as simple as pop a drive controller card on there and boot the thing up. Watch it work. If that's the case, we'll assemble it. So, <laughs> fingers crossed. Let's just throw caution to the wind and let's just hook up all of it and see what it does. This style of drive doesn't have any, any keys on it, so it's kind of hard to see. Um, it's hard to know which way to plug the cable, but pretty much always, there'll be an indicator somewhere on the board that shows you where pin one is. So on the bottom of our heart, on our floppy drive, it's actually printed uh, pin 34 and pin one will be over here. So 
uh, pin one's going to be over here, so I'll put the red stripe to that. Again, these aren't keyed like a lot of them are. And on the uh, on this board, it shows that pin 39 is here and pin one is here. So we know that it goes on like this. And same with the floppy. Pin one is over here. So again, we'll put the red stripe to pin one. All right, so with that in mind, we should be able to fire this thing up and see some kind of a post. Um, hopefully let's recognize some drives. I don't know. Now I didn't get anything out of that. And maybe some of the more astute among you might realize um, what's wrong here. These are the power wires. I literally forgot to plug up power to either drive. <laughs> okay. I have no business doing this kind of work, do I? All right, let's try that again. Got a hard drive spinning up. So I have uh, floppy drive A none, floppy drive B none, hard disk C none, hard drive D none. The BIOS should have detected, uh, at least detected the uh, the floppy drive, if it were any good. Well, I ran out of time uh, working on this the other day. This is a few days later, and uh, as I'm thinking about this, the more I think about it, the more I think I remember that you, I think you have to assign. Um, the, all the drives in BIOS on AT machines. I haven't worked on one of these things since I was, I don't know, probably in my late teens, early 20s, something like that. It's been a long time since I worked on one. And um, I didn't really work on them then. We had, I had one and I just kind of tinkered with it here and there, but I didn't work on this age of machine professionally, although I'm pretty old. <laughs> so, but anyway, I think I remember that you do have to assign even floppy and stuff in BIOS or it won't just automatically even detect that there's something there. I was thinking that it would detect that there's a floppy there even if it didn't detect what it was. But I do believe you have to go and assign them in BIOS. So I'm going to, I'm going to baseline. I've been kind of shortcutting everything, you know, with, with leaving all this stuff put together. I'm going to blow it all apart. We're going to try to hook up just the floppy, get into BIOS and, um, you know, see if we can just get one drive at a time, at least doing something. Also, I went out and uh, to, to the good old Ebay's and I bought another uh, another drive controller. I don't know if it works, but I have it. So worst case scenario, there's that. I don't want to give up on this card yet, just yet, uh, but we will pretty quickly if we need to. All right, let's, uh, let's blow this apart and see where we go from there. All right, well, I have the desk kind of cleaned up some, and I have both drives out of their little respective cages thing. And I guess the only thing to do now, and then that's the other thing, I wanted to, you know, make sure, sure, sure I was plugging number one into number one and all that. So red stripe to number one. I guess on this one, it is actually keyed on the floppy. You can't mess that up. So that's plugged in. And floppy so red stripe number one again all right moment of truth I believe it's f1 or delete to get in there i think i missed it let's try it again what is a drum on both of them ah, there we go so standard cmos setup improper use yeah um, hard, uh, floppy drive type A, and I believe it's page up and page down in order to change these. So it's not a three and a half; it's a five and a quarter. I think it's a one point two meg five and a quarter. I really don't know; haven't even researched the uh, part number. But <laughs> we'll start there. Enter, and uh, okay, so we should be able to escape out of here now. Right to CMOS and exit. Yes. Okay. 
What happens at boot time? Does it even try? Let's see. No, I don't even have anything going on at all. So I'm going to unplug it and power it up and just see if anything even tries to spin at all. Yeah, something actually did try to spin just then. Ow. I just stuck my finger in the fan. That was nice. Uh, I guess one last Hail Mary pass here. I'll try the the cable that was originally on it. Uh, see, I I pulled the uh, I pulled the drive and the cables and all that out of this this machine here just to see if it would recognize anything. And it could just be that the floppy controller is dead or the drive controller is dead. I mean, I don't know. Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, I saw just the slightest movement out of the head there, but whenever I insert a disc in here, okay. Well, that's something new. Wasn't doing that a second ago. Oh, I had the... Uh... Oh, hey, we're getting somewhere now. It's actually... Uh... It's actually speeding, trying to, re trying to read the disc. It's spinning. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you can tell I'm not expert at the uh, AT stuff. So at this point, it is actually spinning and reading. Uh, okay. Next for the hard drive, I guess, huh? I have both drives hooked up here. The uh, floppy or the floppy is still the way it was. The hard drive is um, now hooked up. So I guess we go in and assign the the drive type uh, in BIOS for the hard drive. Luckily, I have a sheet here that shows. Uh, so I have native and translation. I wonder which one we use. I don't know. I'm thinking we use, let's try native. We'll start there. So fire this thing up. There goes our drive. Get into BIOS. Standard. Hard disk C type. So 782 cylinders. Let's um let's jump up there. So page up and page down. So that's the first one there. 782 4. Oh, that's uh user type 782. I don't have 782, but that type 47 has 782 in it. 782, four heads, 862, sectors, 27, 41 megs. I don't know what WPCOM is. I don't remember that, but I hear a noise. Anyway. Let's um, escape out of here. Right, see Moss and exit. Yes. Now, what do we get? I hear it. I hear the drive. Oh, I hear the drive. Missing operating system. Well, do we try it in the translation side? Let's. Because there was, I think I, there was one of those there. This um, cylinder seven, uh, 977. seventy seven, five, seventeen, forty one meg. So yeah, that um, that matches 
perfectly. All right, let's try that then. So escape, right to CMOS and exit. Yes. Now what? Hear it again. Strive's making some weird. Oh, look, starting MS DOS. This trial's making some weird noise. Yeah, I don't think it's doing well, boys and girls. Not at all. Huh. I think we have a dead drive. I mean, it works, technically. It's just the hard drive is unhappy. And that noise, yeah, that noise is not a good one. I'm pretty sure that's, um, I'm pretty sure that's uh, probably the head making contact with the, uh, with the, one of the platters. Pretty sure. Well, what do you think? What do we do from here? Do we try to get a DOS disk going and try to format it? Or do we do something else? I don't know. Well, I kind of had a little bit of a, uh, a thought. Um, I don't have any way to create a startup disk for this. Although I almost feel like it's working. I don't have a way to make a, a disk for it. So what I thought I might do is um, pull the floppy and hard drive out of this machine. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't have a... Uh, Molex power cable to floppy adapter for this style floppy mother or this uh, power spot doesn't have one and I don't have one anywhere else like an adapter so I have a bench power supply that I just used to test things sitting here and um, I thought maybe what I would do is boot up and, and try to get into DOS and at least kind of see where we're at there I'm going to power the floppy drive from this bench top power supply Sounds easy enough, right? I have the ribbon cable that also came out of this machine. We're gonna go down this road and see what happens. So I guess we'll jump back into BIOS and change the floppy type from this to this. Uh, F1 and delete, I guess. Standard CMOS setup. And we're gonna change this from a 1.2, five and a quarter to a 1.44, three and a half. Escape, right to CMOS, yes, enter. Okay. I heard it. Oh, maybe I should put a, uh, a floppy in. Oh, here's a floppy. DOS 622. Uh, okay, I guess. It's really lazy. It's not. It's not doing a lot of reading for some reason. Okay, never mind. Here come. It's coming up. It's coming up. What do I have on this? Do I have uh, F disk? Crap. Where's my K? There it is. K K key was working. I do have F disk. So if I have F disk and format, I wonder if I can hook up this hard drive again and format it or F disk it or something it. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I've got, I've got random stuff not working. Directory of star dot, and there's no dot exe. Um, Check disk. So another thing I want to do is a check disk. Actually, I'm going to do a check disk first because I have that utility on here. Let's power it off. Let's hook up the hard disk again and see if we can do a quick check disk on it or see if we can do anything at all with it or if it's just hosed. I have a feeling it's just hosed because it's making some very mechanically unhappy noises. What's it going to boot to? Can we check the boot order of this? Because I have a feeling it's going to try to go to the hard disk. Don't you? 
so do I have a boot option here? Not here, I don't. So escape. Let's go to advanced. Ooh. System boot up sequence. C then A. All right. Let's change that. A then C. Escape out of there. All right. C mouse and exit. Yes. All right. My goal is just to get it up and going on the floppy drive and see if I can do anything to the hard drive. I don't think I can though. Maybe one more reboot and then we call it dead. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, I am going to call it a dead hard drive at this point, and I'm going to call it a potentially working floppy drive at this point. And I think what I'm going to do here, I need to try to get this, uh, this floppy disk formatted somehow so that I can at least get uh, DOS on it so I can boot to it. But I think what I want to do is I think I want to go ahead and start assembling some of this stuff back into the machine case because I'm pretty sure the system board's working. I'm pretty sure my drive controller's working. I know this VGA card works, although I'm not probably going to keep it. But I want to see if the display works in the uh, in the machine. So um, I think that's the next thing to do is let's get that up and going and um, maybe start getting some of this junk in the same shell. I guess the best place to start here is um, with our little screw pack, pack thing that we got. How does the board go? This way. Well, it fits, so that's a plus. It's got the power supply back in it. It's a little bit of a tight fit down there, but I guess it's in. And what's next? I think, I think maybe it's going to be the display adapter. I'd like to put that here toward the end somewhere. Maybe like that. This is the Power, I think for it this is the ribbon cable for it so that's got the basics of that taken care of the card is powered the machine is powered I think we need to see if we have an LCD display at this point don't we I think that's probably the next best thing to do all right Moment of truth. I've got the same thing that I had before. Which cut? Oh, no, maybe not. I don't have anything on the screen, but. I don't have all those lines now, so that's good. Okay, back to the drawing board. Well, I gotta admit, I'm kind of at a loss here as far as where to go next. Um, I have uh, I have done a lot of troubleshooting to try and see what the deal is. I even put the uh, I even put this uh, graphics board back on the original uh, on the original board because if you remember um, I had a VGA card I stuck on here and it did boot it just didn't have any keyboard input so I was hoping that maybe the BIOS had something in particular for this card or something that was turned on or off for this card 
So I thought I'd stick a couple of, of memory sticks in there and try it. Put it exactly the same way. Just to double check, double check myself, I put my VGA card back in there and it, it boots right to it, no problem. So um, all of that points to the fact that I have a, I believe a faulty board. And the reason I sort of believe that is because this thing has a uh, an output, a, a secondary monitor output on it. It's a uh, DB9. And according to this, you can flip dip switch number six to the on position and use the external output of this. Well, I have an adapter uh, from, uh, from EGA to VGA here, and I still get no output from the card whatsoever. So thinking it's a bad card, I did go out and look around on eBay some to try and find another uh, similar board. But what I'm unable to find is one that has this uh, this header here for uh, for the LCD. So I'm not really sure where I go from here. Boy, things are slipping around here. <laughs> I'm not getting any traction with any of this. Um, I went back to this desktop. I yanked the floppy drive out. I put it all back here. You really can't see that because... Well, my overhead camera died because, well, it's a GoPro and GoPros just do that. They just die. Anyway, I got to deal with that later. But, um, so as it stands here now, I have back to this power supply because it has the right floppy uh, power cable to run the floppy disk. I have them plugged into the machine and my DOS 622 disc that I have used forever, in fact I just used a few minutes ago in the same video, decides that it has now got a bad sector evidently. So it doesn't do anything. So what do we do? We pull out the old ancient compact Contura Arrow that we did in another video and we, uh, <laughs> we create ourselves a, uh, a DOS boot disc. I'd like to be able to boot from this floppy and format this floppy so that this floppy will at least boot. At that point, I'll put the whole mess back together and maybe I'll look for another uh, replacement hard drive for this or maybe I'll get a compact flash to IDE or something like that. Um, or maybe I won't, I don't, I don't know. I think at this point the goal is just to get it back in one box and booting, even though the screen is not gonna happen, that seems like a good enough, a small victory, how about that? While we're at it, just look at my desk. It is an absolute disaster. I'm just gonna jump back out of windows. There's no point in having it going on. Pretty sure this is a blank disc. Pretty sure this disc works. Not positive though. Uh, format a colon and transfer the system while you're at it. Your disc gets in there, we're rebooting or re reformatting. Okay, moment of truth. Will it boot? Will it not? Who's taking bets? So that's on, which means these are on. I guess the thing is to see the thing will even boot from the floppy disk at first, or from from the three and a half. It does look like it's trying to do something. Oh yeah, here we go. Starting MS DOS. Excellent. Okay. Now I'm just going to run into BIOS and assign drive B as this one, and fingers crossed that works. All right, current time and date. I'm just gonna go with the defaults here and see if I even have a drive B. I do have a drive B. Huh. I have a drive B. Okay. <laughs> what that means is I'm going to get this disc, this floppy disc back out of here, get it back onto the computer and uh, transfer some of the, the rest of the DOS utilities onto it so I can do a 
format of this drive and a system transfer of this drive. How about that? All right, I've got some tools and utilities copied over to my floppy disk. So I guess at this point I should be able to do sysb colon, right? No, I can't do sysb colon. I got to format it first. I got to format it first. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm excited. Let's do format b colon slash s. Does that work? Hey, it just picked up the disc. Now, if my existing uh, disc itself is any good, that'll be the next thing. Uh, this, uh, anyway, this thing has uh, MS DOS 620 on it, so that's fairly current version of DOS. So that's the one. That's what I ended up formatting, uh, or the system that's actually on this uh, this diskette looks to be writing it. Drive speed's come a long way. All right, so at this point, I should have a very basic uh, MS-DOS 620 boot disk on this. So I should be able to get rid of this drive, put my original short cable back in this, and I should be able to at least boot from this from this drive. Now I have this uh, this drive plugged back in by itself run into CMOS here and um, set this thing as the only uh, diskette in the system. So drive type A is going to be 1.2 and B is going to be nothing. Escape. Right, CMOS, yes and yes. It should boot at this point. If it does, it's going back together. I believe it's going to boot. Probably shouldn't have said that. Mm, it's going to boot. All right. All right, so at least this machine is to a point that it will basically boot up. That was uh, that was a whole thing right there. All right, I um, think I'm going to stick it back together and get it back in a state where it's all in one package. I'm going to leave this VGA card in here for now until um, I decide what what best to do with it next. Well, here's where we are. Machines back together and uh, I have the VGA card in it. I have the hard drive and the floppy back in it, but the hard drive is not hooked up at this point. Um, I can boot the machine and, you know, using an external monitor, boot it to the, the, the five and a quarter floppy and at least get a DOS prop. So it basically, at least it works. I guess it's better than it was when I found it. But, um, you know, I, I don't, at this point, I don't even know if the graphics adapter is any good or even if the monitor is any good. I suspect the graphics adapter is what it is, but I am not able to locate one easily that has that ribbon style header on it um, for, for an LCD display. I just can't find one. If anybody out there has any ideas, definitely let me know down in the comments because you know I would be interested in finding one to get this thing back up and going. The other thing that is missing is the hard drive. and. You know, I may look around on um, on eBay. I may try to find a you know a uh, hard hard drive for it, and at least get that up and going. Um, I hesitate at this point to put one of those compact flash to IDE adapters in it, although that may end up happening. I feel like I feel like without the display working, eh, what's the real purpose? You know, why, why would I do that? So uh, anyway, if uh, if anybody has any insight on on this display, like I said, or that that display adapter, I would love to hear it. Um, you know, again down in the comments. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the brakes on this project for now, and we're going to say it was a maybe not a complete success, 
but maybe not a complete failure. So it's somewhere in, in between. We'll put it on the shelf, we'll hang on to it. Obviously, we're not gonna get rid of it. And if, uh, if we can run across the parts, we'll revisit it. Guys, I really appreciate you watching the video. We're very close to a thousand subscribers. If, if you could see your way clear to hit the little uh, subscribe button, I really appreciate it. The like button or the unlike button, use them. And if you have anything to say down in the comments, please do so. Helps out the YouTube algorithm. Gets us a little more subscribers, a few more views, and promotes our video. Um, but anyway, as usual, guys, till next time, thanks for watching.